like to say shalom to all my, all my Israelite brothers and sisters, those that are near and those that are far off. We are, um, we are um, coming on here to this video. What we're about to do is we're about to begin a series, a series of videos um, that was uh, dealing with some questions that I had uh, prompted some of the brothers and sisters to uh, to uh, answer. Uh, one of them was going to be, I want to see if somebody can beckon for Stephen Israel. Uh, somebody can beckon for Stephen Israel because he didn't know it, but I read one of his posts. I read one of his posts and, and, um, and uh, he was saying that, uh, you know, it was only 66 books uh, from Genesis to Revelations, and that's pretty much all that we needed. So that's what I wanted to beckon for that young brother because his uh, his post and his comment was right along the lines of what I was going to deal with. Because for this next series of videos that we're getting ready to start up, uh, if the mind is not open enough to understand that there is no way that uh, the grand sum total of the Most Highest program could be contained in a single book that a uh, man can compile. And then on top of that, there's many things that we have to ask ourselves, even concerning those 66 books, as to the, the level of corruption that are contained within the framework of the books, uh, all the way down from the standpoint of, of who had the authority. Uh, who had the authority, and from my understanding, that the people that even put this compiled the 66 books they don't have the authority to determine what books we're going to go into there all of those things had to be done based on what those who were in power deemed to come out of it they had to compose the books in such a way that they could use the book as a means of control for people that's why so many other books are not there but what we wanted to do is because when we start going into this this video series that is dealing with the doctrine of Yeshua HaMashiach and we start going in, into this uh, issue of uh, whether uh, the sacrificial uh, blood sacrifice of uh, uh, Yeshua's death is what was going to atone for man's sins. When we start going into detail, we're going to be moving outside of the framework of these 66 books because and then you're going to see, but we're going to, we're going to demonstrate some things before we go there. We're going to demonstrate some things before we go there so that you can have an understanding because we don't want people to turn out, be turned out because now all of a sudden we're using books that you never understood. Well, back in 1992, I remember when back in 1992, a friend of mine gave me a, a, a King James Bible that was published in the 1800s great big bible and uh as i was going through that bible and going through that bible i stumbled across something that was called the apocrypha and i was like what is this i ain't never seen nothing like that because i'd only been exposed to the 66 books but when i seen that apocrypha i felt like that the most high was giving me insight into some understanding that had not been released to everybody and so uh so I started reading and I started studying the apocryphal books right along with everything else. I come to understand that there is no way possible that these books could not be inspired by the Ruach HaKadash or they could not be a part of the Most High's Holy Scrolls that he had given to his people. And even right now to this day, right now in this day and time, it's a little bit different. What's up, Boogaloo Boo? Here, you're going to have to go over and get it, okay? Hey. How you doing? Good. It's, uh, when you go in the house, just uh -huh. unlock the bottom lock. When you go over there and go into that little room where the glass counter is, uh -huh. now there's a chest, a wooden shelf behind the counter. Uh-huh. It's a box. It looks like it's a shoe box, but the projector is in there. Okay. You might have to you might have to go and buy a computer a computer cord. Oh, uh, okay. I got it. You got one of them computer cords that got the little blue thing on it with the two screws on the end? I don't know. I might. I'm good. Okay. 
Go well, get just get the box and bring it over here so I can see everything that you got. Okay. So sorry about that. So, so like we were saying is that uh, so when I start reading out of those books, I've said you know what this is this is something. Then I started seeing a level of corruption, and so to give you an example of what we're talking about, when we know that when you put the NIV Bible up side by side with a King James Version Bible. Both of them contain 66 books. But both of them don't contain the same amount of scriptures. You see? Because that, that, I do believe that they say that that NIV Bible is probably missing about, who knows, 1,500 scriptures? I don't know. I, I'm not exactly sure exactly how many. Stephen Israel, I want you to come on here live. I want you to read something. I want you to do some reading for me. Uh, it's going to be for your edification. And it's going to be for an example to our brothers and sisters. So I want you to come on here live with me. And I want you to share with them that last post that you did concerning uh, the different books. Because that's what we want to do. And we have to learn how to grow together. There's too many of us that thinking that we have arrived at the grand sum total of the Most High's understanding when we really haven't. And we still have many brothers and sisters that are still within the constructs of Christianity, Islam, that are still uh, in church, that have not learned how to operate according to the scriptures, that are still just listening to what men have to say, and then you take men's word for it, and then you don't know whether what he's saying is really true in the scriptures or not. So before we open up this set of uh, videos, it's imperative that we get our brothers and sisters to understand that no set of men had the authority to determine what would be classified as the Most High's word or not. So you have some books that were written and that were hidden because of corruption that were not found just, just recently. They stumbled across the Dead Sea Scrolls as they were peering through a, uh, a cave. You understand what I'm saying? And these books contained within the framework of these scrolls just so happened to be books that other books had written about that these things had been hidden away from men so that men couldn't corrupt them. And many of these things we know that it, it also recorded that when these people through the Council of Nicaea had discovered these scrolls and these books that had been written, that had been preserved because they were hidden, when they discovered them, they hurry up and grabbed them and chucked them away and declared that they wouldn't put these in here because there was a level of conflict uh, concerning the things that, that they would like to go in there. So the reason why we want to open this up is that we want to show you that even through the books that have been compiled through the Council of Nicaea, who was a set of pale face, pale face Romans, pale face Jews, that had no authority whatsoever, the pale faces that declared that the children of Israel would receive a new name and it would be called Christian, the pale faces that would incorporate and now uh, corrupt our holy scrolls by adding things and then taking things away. And as we go into this series of, of videos, what we're going to do is we're going to be doing with the King James Version Bible the same thing that we have done with the NIV Bible to see at some scriptures the head had been chopped off and some the tail had been chopped off and some the whole body of the animal was chopped off and was removed and wasn't put in there so that we can't have a full comprehension of what it is. Now, when we put the King James Version Bible next to the NIV Bible, we can see the level of corruption where they had tampered with the, King, the NIV Bible by changing the meaning of certain things so that we didn't get the full comprehension. Well, as we back up, as we back up to older books, books that are older, the books that existed before the 66 books were compiled by the pale faced Romans and given to us as the Holy Bible as we we're going to set that King James next to books that were older 
than it so that we can see the level of corruption that exists today. Let's see here. Okay, so just give me one second. Oh, this is the wrong one, Aubrey. Shoebox. Oh, I guess I put this one in the shoebox. Didn't you see another one over there? I did. You did? Uh -huh. Okay, well, go get the other one. Bring the other one over here because it should be a cord over there, too. It should be. You got two cords over there. You got one cord that's plugged in, uh -huh. and then you got a blue cord that plugs from here into the back of the computer. Okay. So look for those plugs. Bring that other Which projector. Is it again? Bring that other projector with you. That one. Yeah. So, so that's what we're gonna do. Now, if you got any brothers and sisters that's in church, you can invite them on to the video. Uh, Stephen Israel, you're not you're not afraid to come on here live, or you just hit the invite button, and then I'm gonna bring you on here. I'm gonna have you to do the reading for me. And you don't have to be afraid to come on here because um, this is not going to be something that, that's going to uh, antagonize you or make fun of you or put you down or anything. This is going to be something that's going to strengthen you and it's going to strengthen uh, strengthen us as brothers. And, uh, and then on top of that, if you are afraid to come on here, you remember this, that the Most High ain't given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us one of power and of a sound mind. So you tossing these scriptures, you doing the work of the Most High. It's the Most High by His Spirit that's beckoning you right now to hit the invite button. That's how you do that. Cause, cause this is gonna be good. I see. I got you. Oh, that's Ralph. Huh? That's Brother Ralph right there. Brother Ralph, let me see. I'm trying to get this the young king is supposed to come in here and read. But I tell you what, before we get started, I'm gonna bring Brother Ralph Hall in here and uh, for about five minutes, and uh, and let him uh, breathe on y'all, speak what's on his mind. All right. <clears throat> I still want Israel. I want Stephen Israel to be uh, the next person on there. So. Yeah, so we'll give him, we'll, we'll bring Brother Ralph Hall in for about five minutes to let him breathe, breathe on y'all on what's on his mind. And then we want to get, uh, okay, okay, King Mache, we want to get Stephen uh, uh, Israel on there too uh, so that he can come on and read for us. Shalom, King Ralph. How you living? Uh, God have him bless you and keep him his face shine upon you and give you and all of Israel peace. We're just here in the Bahamas. We have a very, very bad storm coming through here. Um, one of our islands is totally covered with water, and uh, Freeport, Grand Bahamas, is expecting to have uh, surges that's about maybe 15 to 20 feet high, which is uh, which will cover all the roofs of houses. So um, mm. people are uh, trying to evacuate and trying to uh, basically find higher ground somewhere. It was hard to find higher ground when you know the land is at sea level or below right. sea level. Mm. So it's kind of like the same effect that happened in Louisiana. Mm. <clears throat> Only saving grace is some people were able to get on the roofs, you know. Wow. So uh, for those of us have families, those other islands, uh, we're praying for them. And please uh, extend your prayers for the people in the Bahamas here. And uh, also the storm is expecting to hit Florida, Puerto Rico. My brother's in Puerto Rico and, um, and then Florida, Melbourne, Cocoa Beach, um, maybe Miami. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So pray for us. Yeah, we most definitely, we most definitely. I'm, I'm praying. I'm, I'm, I'm praying too. I'm, I'm praying. Yeah, yeah, we most definitely gonna keep the brothers and sisters lifted up in prayer. Most highs will be done, and I uh, just pray that He protect His people uh, through situations like this and make us powerless. And that's a good thing because you know it's, Amen. it's time out. It's, it's high time out for nonsense that uh that when brothers and sisters get put in situations like that, you know what I mean? That that our mindset is still on things that, that it should not be on. So so we definitely gonna keep you uh keep brothers and sisters down there. This is brother Ralph Hawes, my brother Ralph Hall, he's down there in the that's all down there in the Bahamas. And uh he's updating us on the uh hurricane that's blowing through there. So uh, we want everybody that's in tune with this uh video and even abroad to keep our brothers and sisters lifted up 
in prayer and pray that the most highest will be done his hand of protection to protect his people even even in the midst well of you know we we, pr we appreciate that there's been lives lost uh but um you know we, you know we we're praying that that um you know that uh that doesn't um it doesn't get any worse you know we pray that um god has mercy upon us down here yeah you know and um so uh we may be spared and um you know be able to uh live another day to learn about him yeah may he have mercy upon all of us and our ignorance and uh, of him you know cuz even christ says uh father forgive them for for they know no do know what they do you know forgive them mm -hmm. so um we pray God's mercies. All praise. All praise. Anything you want? You got anything uh, right immediately on your heart that you want to share with your brothers and sisters? Well, well, you know, no more, brother. You're, you're doing a good job, and I praise God for you, man. You're in the trenches, and um, praise God for you. And, um, you know, it's, like you said, it's about um, God revealing himself to us, you know. Um, <clears throat> I, I like to say, I like the scripture, uh, 1 John 4, 16 and 17, it says, God is love. And in verse 17 says, here is love perfected. As he is, so are we in this world. <laughs> and it's so important. What you're doing is so important because persons have to understand that, you know, our our book, the book that we've written, what they call the Holy Bible, has been twisted and turned around and changed and the language has been changed and and, you know, and we literally speaking spells on ourselves because we don't understand the, the true definition of the words we speak when trying to deal with the words of God and the Holy Bible. Because it claims from many other languages like Lithuanian, Yugoslavian, Dutch, Greek, German, Latin, Greek, you know, uh, uh, Punjabi, uh, Sanskrit being the oldest language. So if you don't understand the, etym <coughs> the etymology of the word, the definition of the word is very very difficult to try to understand what the Lord is trying to say to us, He's trying to relate to us, we're trying to reveal to us, you know, for example, the word immortality, the etymology of the word immortality means, he says, seek immortality, eternal life. Immortality means endless life, a deathless life. That changes everything, you know. Um, the word heaven, the etymology of the word heaven means the, the visible sky. You, you you say so. Well, I mean, so where's the invisible one? Where's the word of God? So, you know, so it's very very important, you know, to, to understand that the word understanding, the etymology of the word understand means to receive. So if you don't understand, how can you receive money or anything? You understand it. So, what I like what you're doing is you're you're trying to bring understanding and clarity. Uh, to the word of God, and and this is what we need. We need to dig deep. We need to dig deep, we need to bring clarity to what we try, what God is trying to convey and to realize that we all in this image and this likeness. The word one means same, identical, no difference. When Christ says in John John uh, 10, he says, the Father and I are one. Then he says, I'm in the Father, ye, not, ye and me, and I'm in you, we are one. The Oxford Dictionary 1954 edition, which, which like you're dealing with the older books, have more meat, more power, and they're more expensive because they're out of print books. They're reference books, but that's where all the power and knowledge is. And it says that, um, it says that the, the again, that the, the word one means same, identical, no difference. You see, so we are the same as God, identical God, no difference. By way of death and burial and resurrection of the Son, Jesus Christ, of now Messiah, Yahweh, Yeshua, the Rock, the Mishiach, cause most infallible name, Elohim, Yud, Hey, Vah, Hey, Yud, Hey, Vah, Hey, Elohim. So, <clears throat> This is what God is. John 1, 14 says the word became flesh. The invisible became visible. Me, you, and everybody else in the earth. Everybody thinks the gate of heaven is at the graveyard, but it's our mother's uterus. You know, when we come up between the legs and the first call we meet is her. You, you, you know, and so we in his image is like this. We are as he is in the world. And we have to practice this love. We have to practice being this amongst one another. You see, God doesn't have anything short of that. And you have to have a relationship with the Word of God to, 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 to understand, to really understand that and to, and to and have cognizance of it. You, you see, this is no joke. This is a real time we're living in, and, and we have to be real. I mean, our words, 
In the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, the Word was God. All things were created by the Word, and the light, life for men. So everything you can see in the visible heaven and the invisible heaven are words. Mm -hmm. You know, and the whole, you can spell heaven, you can spell heaven in the Bible, and you can spell heaven in the earth. Both in the same place, same time. Because, you know, there's no man time and God time. It's the days, the year, years, day, 1,000 years, one day to God. So, you know, man separates and divides, you know. And, and, and so that's where we got to become, brother. We just have to be students of the word like yourself and enlighten one another and empower one another and, and be careful of the words we speak. <clears throat> but these words are angelic and they have power. They're more powerful than nuclear weapons, bullets, guns, warships. You know, these words are angels, you know, and they're, they're very, very powerful, you know, and, and we, have to, we have to understand the words we speak before we let them loose out of our mouth because they do things, you know. We are gods and gods are speaking it, but they realize they're not, and they, they, they do things, they accomplish things, they manifest. So I'll just leave that with you all, but um, well, I, I appreciate you, brother, uh, Dimitri, and... You think, you think, sis, I got you on here? Uh, I don't know if I, I don't believe our other brothers just want some, some of the brothers just not ready for the camera. So, uh, do you think I can keep you on here and then you can, uh, are you in a position to do some reading for me? Um, I left my Bible at the house. That's okay. I didn't bring in the car with me. I, I got one of my young, I got one of my young kings on here. I'm going to let you get out of here, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll praise this for you. Double honors to you, uh, uh, King Ralph. We're going to be in prayer. We're going to have a prayer before we end this video for our brothers and sisters in the eye of that storm, okay? I'm going to bring my young king okay. on here and let him read for me, all right? Oh, oh, okay, King Dimitri. God have a blessing. Keep him. Maybe I'll read another time for you. It'll be a pleasure to read for you another time. Okay. And um, so I, I guess I'm in my truck right down in front of the on the run gas station here. Okay. And um, so, um, but um, it certainly be a pleasure to read for you anytime. Okay. Uh, it's just hard to catch up with you sometimes. So, no so I might catch up with you. Yeah, when I catch up with you on this thing, it's it, it's usually you, you've you been an hour off or you just got off or I could never catch you like this where you, you know, you're, you're just coming on. So it's always, you know, you 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 you, you, you spoke an hour later, two or three hours, you know, so. But I saw this time, he said, Dimitri live. So I said, okay, let me jump on and say hello. Well, I'm glad you did. I'll praise to the most I, uh, for you, uh, Brother Ralph. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, brother. Blessings to everybody. God bless. Uh, 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 King D, I want you to come on here. I hope you're in a position where you can do some reading. D, yes, I got you now. I'll see you later, baby. Love you. Uh, take my stuff back over there, okay? And bring my keys back. And uh, your face is familiar. I don't... Yeah, remember I came for the barbecue. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Okay. Don't break my stuff. You break it, you buy it. Okay. Okay. All right. So, that was Brother Ralph. And Brother Ralph, we thank the most high. We thank the most high for all of the brothers. Brother Ralph is very... Uh, very uh, spirit field young brother down there in the Bahamas. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. But now, as like we were saying, is that, you know, there is no way possible. And this is, there is a level of arrogance uh, with the Father's people. Because, you know, the, the Most High is merciful and he is gracious. And see, th see the, the real issue is that there is not a man on the planet that can teach another man what truth is. Shalom, Shalom. We got my young king, Daoud Beloved, on there. We got Daoud Beloved on there. Shalom. But see, another man, there's no man that can lead a man to truth. Only the Most High can do that because only the Most High is the embodiment of truth. You understand? But he reveals truth for, to them that are willing to chase after it. For them that, that connect themselves to him, then the Most High can reveal truth. But those that are chasing after the truth, the Most High can reveal truth to them. But they can go out and, and with the truth that's been revealed to them, and they can't get not one person to see it or to receive it. Because the truth has to come the same way. But there is a level of arrogance that we have when we think that we have arrived at the grand sum 
some total of truth. That's why every now and then the Father calls all men to repentance. And so before we get these series of videos started, I am going to be first to lead by example. Okay, because I came up in the Christian church a vast majority of my life and let the truth be told. There are things that we learned in the Christian church that even though we have come into the truth of being Israel, we still hold dear to those things. I learned through the Christian church that the shedding of the blood of the Messiah was for the remission of our sins. That's what I learned. You see, those are the things that I learned. When I was in church, I understood that the 66 books of the Bible was all that was, all, that's all we needed. We had the Holy Bible. And so when you had got exposed to other books, it was, it was a level of challenge and it was a level of wrestling that came with that. You see? And so when the fathers start revealing truth, if it's in opposition to the things that you've been taught, then there's a level of wrestling and there's a level of challenging. Now, we can easily go into a place of, huh? we, we can easily go into a place that we can start becoming rejectors of the Father's word simply because we cannot accept anything that's outside of the norm of what we have been taught or what we have learned. But now let me give you an example. Most of us that were in Christianity, when you came face to face with the truth of being Israel, it was like the, the father pulled the rug of Christianity off him up under you. You hit the ground and you were left there flat on your face. All that you knew and all that you thought to be true was counted as dung. It was worthless. It was nothing. So you had to start from scratch, learning all over again according to who you were, you see? But just because you come into truth of being Israel, you can't get arrogant and high-minded as though Israel is this and Israel, and this is the way we get, and we talk in scriptures, and we talk in scriptures, and we talk in scriptures, and we are without the understanding that the Most High, He reveals truth from truth. And truth from truth. So there is a, 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 a verse, a passage in the Bible that says we will go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. We go to the book of Hebrews, the fifth chapter. It starts talking about how strong, how everyone that is on milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. But strong meat belong to them who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And then he goes on into the sixth chapter where it says, Therefore, let us leave the, uh, the simplistic principles of the faith and go on and grow to to maturity and this we will do if the most high permit see the most high will permit those that have a hunger and a thirst after his righteousness and after his truth he will permit them to go on and grow to maturity to go from faith to faith and from glory to glory there is another group of people that will not be permitted to go on from faith to faith from and to glory to glory because they allow themselves to get stagnant in their mentality as though that they have arrived at the grand sum total of the Father's will. And ultimately those people will be the ones to miss the Father's mark. You see? So what we want to do is we want to use these things as an example to broaden the scope of our brothers and sisters perspective so that you don't find yourself just like this where the only thing that you can see is what's in your narrow vision. And your peripheral vision is shut off. The peripheral vision of life is shut off. When you know what? When you are looking through your physical eyes, the peripheral vision have stopped mass destruction from happening to people. As even though they was looking straight ahead, they seen something traveling on this side of their face. And before it could touch them, the peripheral knocked it down. Or the peripheral seen something that was coming from this way, even though they was looking straight ahead. And this is how we have to be with the Most High's Word. 
we have to understand that he gives truth and we can truth reveal and that truth can see. But all in our peripheral, things are still being revealed if we can receive it. So we're going to use this thing as an example. Now, our brother, to my brother, uh, Stephen Israel, and his post, he didn't know that his post was right along the line of what we was about to open up. That's why it would have been such a good thing if I could have got him on here. Because this was going to be a good example to show you how the Most High will start unfailing and revealing truth that you once didn't know. That will bring you to a place that, that once you learn something that you never knew before, it excites your senses. And it, it heightens your uh, desire to know more. You like, wow, if that was if if they lied to me about that, how much more did they lie about? If that was true, how much more this is true? And that's what the word of the most high do for us. That's what the most high does for us. That's what the most high does for us. Hold on, let me one moment. Let me see. Uh, well, I would have took a look at it, but I don't think my, I think my apocryphal book is out in the truck. Let's see. Let's see here. Let's see. I can look at it. I can take a look at it. But I'd be the first one to tell you I don't know everything. So let's go and take a look at it and see. Let's take a look at it and see. What is that? Second Esdras, chapter 7, verse 28 and 29. Let's take a look. Okay, now it says, For my son Jesus, or Yeshua, shall be revealed with those that be with him. We know that he was revealed, those that were with him were the disciples. Okay, because when we start talking about those that are with him, he's not talking about all of us. We're talking about those that were physically with him. He said, For my son shall be revealed with, with those that are with him. And they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. After, after these years shall my son Christ die and all men that have, and all men that have life. Now, here's the thing. You asking me to explain this passage of scripture that's saying that, that, uh, that Christ shall be re revealed with those that are with him. And they that remain shall rejoice for 400 years. After these years, Christ dies and all men will have life. Well, that right there is that there was two, there's two verses of scripture that I can't give you an explanation of based off of those simple two verses of scripture. Because at first it's talking about those people that are walking with Christ while he is living. And then it's talking about those that um, that will rejoice for 400 years. And after 400 years, then Christ died. Well, we know that Christ didn't walk the earth for 400 years. And, and so these things right here, some of these things require a little bit more study. And this is why we are going where we are going. Because when y'all see, when we start opening up these books, we think that we comprehend the scriptures. But it's impossible to comprehend the scriptures when half of what's being said is missing. <laughs> so that's the whole purpose of us doing this. So this is unlike something that you can just comprehend from now if it's somebody else that want to come on here and explain it that might have a little bit more understanding in this particular area but i might have to go back and read the full context of what this thing is saying 
That's what I would have to do, me personally. I can't just take the one, two verses of scripture and then give you an explanation of it. Because that is what the Christian church did. And that's how we got so many things out of context. So let me read this again and tell you why, again, that I can't explain this in this manner. For my son, Yahshua, shall be revealed with those that be with him. This is my understanding. Who do you say I am? Each one of the disciples, he asked this question. Who do you say that I am? One of them said, thou art the Christ. Thou art the son of God. The Messiah said, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. But my father who is in heaven by his spirit revealed this to you. So it said he going to be revealed to those that are with him through the things that they have seen him do, through the miracles that they've seen, the walking on water, the, the making the lame walk, the blind, healing the blind, giving sight to, you know what? Those that were with him, he was revealed. To many, he was not revealed to, you see? If the gospel be hidden, it's hidden to them that are lost. So there are many that he did not reveal himself to. He revealed himself to them that were with him. Now, here's where the explanation part that you're asking for goes beyond what I'm able to do because I need to read the fullness of it. He said, and they that remain shall rejoice for 400 years. After these years, is they talking about after the 400 years, after Christ lives 400 years, and after they he reveals himself to have lived 400 years, then my son shall die, and then all men shall have life. You see, that, see, that don't make sense, and I can't make sense out of that, just using these two passages or these two verses. So... So we're going to go back to where we were and uh, and get back to what we originally uh, set out to do so that we may be able to uh, get ready for this set of videos that's coming. Uh, I don't know whether uh, I understood, bro. Yeah, so I, I need somebody to come on here and read something. King Daoud, are you still around or you just came tiptoeing by and breezed by? I want somebody to come on here and read these these passages. I don't want to read them. I want somebody else to read them. I thought my King Young D was going to come on here and read them. Somebody can read them, though. Somebody come on here because what we need to do, we need for people to have an open mind. We need the people, we need people. To, see, and our brothers and sisters that are in Christianity, the reason why their growth is so stagnated is because they will not listen to anything except what they hear from the preacher. And he not, will not listen to anybody. Come on on here and read for me, King D. I need you to read some scriptures. Hit the invite button. You see? And this is one of the things that we try to get our brothers and sisters to understand. Look, man, when it's appointed for you to die once and then meet the Father face to face, it ain't, you know what? I don't care how much you've been misled. You won't be able to blame a preacher, a pastor. You won't be able to blame a camp leader. Uh, Dao, can you come on here and read some scriptures for me? Oh, let me see. I got somebody on here. I got somebody on here. I want to see. I want to see. Uh... I want to see. Okay, yeah, that's cool. I split the scripture readings up. That's going to be good. So, D. Sanders, I'm going to bring this young king in before you. I'm going to let him read three scriptures. Three scriptures, and then you come in, you read the next three. I want to bring Daoud, King Daoud, beloved in here. A few scriptures, too. We are now. Oh, so you believe the 400 years is what we are now doing? Okay, well, I'm going to look into that. I'm going to look into that. I'm going to look into that. Yep, I'm going to look into that. But right now, we're not going to deal with that because we got something specifically that we are attempting to aim at, okay? Yeah, we yeah we know that. We know that. 
We know that. But let's stick to the topic that's at hand. As we move to the videos, we will move into those areas to where you can bring your scriptures and everything. Right now, we're trying to get our brothers and sisters that have not been exposed to anything outside the 66 books to understand that unless you readjust your thinking, you'll do yourself grave injustice. So everybody else that have comments that's going to get ahead, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's stay organized let's stay on point with what we're doing okay let's see here we ain't get okay okay d so let's see d i think the other young king was an accident i tried to bring on and now i'll be waiting on we'll bring king daoud in uh next so we're trying to get our brothers and sisters that or still dealing with Christianity to understand that you can never understand the fullness of the King James Version Bible, except you start uh, leaning and looking into uh, books that are in the King, King James Version. Because oh. what we got to understand is that the King James Version Bible that we have now were compiled from a set of scrolls that there were many of them from. There were many of them. And they just pick and choose which scroll that they will put in there. But as we said before, when you look, if you want to understand what we are saying, compare a King James Version Bible to an NIV uh, a Bible or to a New Life Application Bible, and you'll be able to see the corruption of men. And when you start comparing these King James Version Bibles, we're not going to even compare them. We're just going to show you where some things were shortened, some things were left out, some things were cut off. So the people of the Most High could not get the full understanding of what was being said or what Hamashiach was coming to do. So we need people to understand these things that when they see us using these other books, that they don't start talking about what's canonical and what's not canonical. Because the pale-faced Romans or the pale-faced Jews, they had no authority to deal with Israelite scrolls in that type of manner. That is why we have the corruption that we have, that through replacement theology, the whole key was to blot out the name of Israel so that there wouldn't be no remembrance of who the people were anymore. All right? So, so you, you with me, brother? You with me? Shalom, brother D. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom, y'all. I'm with you. For all my Facebook world, this is brother D. This is D. Sanders of Yahshua the Movement. This is one of our brothers that that was a uh, walk right hand uh, side by side that uh, young young general Deshaun Tatum. Uh, we still lifting up uh, the Most High, His glorious Son, the uh, name, name of the Ruach Hakadesh. So what we're gonna do is we're going brother D, you ready to go? Let's go. Okay, so here what I want you to do is this is for our brothers because we want our brothers to understand that nobody can come and tell you if you're in the Christian church and you've been exposed to the apocryphal book because my Bible contains all the apocryphal books along with the Old Testament and the New Testament. And when I went to church, it made it kind of hard for them to say what was canonical and what was non-canonical because my Bible already existed. So if anything was going to be false, it was going to have to be the Bible that they were using because my book was far older than theirs. So what we're about to do is we're about to look at the 66 books and the things that are contained in the 66 books to make the brothers and sisters understand that when they see us using other books, we are using other books because the Bible itself that is composed of the 66 books speaks of other books that you cannot find in the scripture. You see? And if the prophet spoke the book, then there is no way that anybody can say that anything wasn't canonical or wasn't canonized or whatever it is that they say wasn't authentic. Anything that came out of the prophet's mouth was authentic. So let's go to Exodus chapter 24, verse 7. And follow along, brothers and sisters, write these scriptures down. Matter of fact, somebody put them on the screen. Exodus chapter 24, verse 7. And it reads... And he took the book of the covenant. Hold it, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He took what? The book of the covenant. Now, who can find the book of the covenant within the 66 books of the Bible? Can anybody find it? Have you ever seen it, King D? <laughs> 
Yet you have the prophet speaking. And read it again. What does it say? Loud and strong. And he took the book of the covenant. Go ahead. And, re and read in the audience of the people. And they said, all that the Lord hath said will we do and be obedient. Now. And Moses took. Go okay. ahead. Go ahead. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant, which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. Now, now, then went up, go ahead, go ahead, keep going. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet as it were a paid work of a sapphire stone. Okay, that's good. And as that's it were right the there. body of heaven. That's good right there. Because what I want people to understand okay. is that here you got Moses, you got Aaron, and you got 70 elders. The Bible contained within the framework of the 66 books coming from the prophet, the words of Moses, it declared Exodus chapter 24, verse 7, and he took the book of the covenant and he read it in the ears of the children of Israel. And when they heard it, they came back and said, all that he have said, we will do. Who is this out here that think that they got the grand sum total of the truth of the Most High's word when you don't know what he read in the ears of the people that they agreed to do it? And until you hear what was contained in the book of the covenant, you don't know what the Most High. You see, this is Moses talking. There are 69 books, I mean 67 books right there. The book of the covenant was read. So there was a level of understanding that came from the book of the covenant that challenged the children of Israel to be obedient. But how can you be obedient to some truth that you ain't never seen before? Come on, brother D, you ready? Let's go to Numbers ready. chapter 21, verse 14. Thank you, brother Isaiah Learning. Please keep these on the screen. I'm going to appoint you to this task as long as you're on the video. Your task is to keep these scriptures up here. Numbers chapter 21, verse 14. Wherefore, it is said in the book, The Wars of the Lord, what he did in the Red Sea and in the brooks of Amen, and at a stream of the brooks that go up down in the dwelling of air and lie up upon the border of Moab. Okay, that's good right there. That's good. Now, what we're talking about, for our brothers and sisters that are in Christianity, our brothers and sisters in the church, our brothers and sisters in the Israelite community, that you cannot have a closed mind. We're talking about the 66 books of the Bible, how the prophets now are speaking books, things concerning books that are not contained in the framework of the 66 books that were given to us by the pale-faced Romans or the pale-faced Jews. They are given 66 books, but they have left many things out. And so you cannot determine that something was non-canonical when it's coming through the mouth of the Most High's prophet. So let's read it again, coming from the book of Numbers, which would, the book of Numbers, which would of 21st chapter, 14 verse. Read that first part again, uh, King D. Wherefore it is said in the book of the wars of the Lord. Stop right there. Where he Stop right there. There's book number 68. Wherefore it is said and written in the book of the wars of the Lord. Who can find the book of the wars of the Lord within the framework of 66 books? No, you can't find it in the 66 books. This is why in the book of Revelations, you had the scripture that said, he that taketh away from the, the words of these prophecies, I will take away from his name out of the book of life. And whosoever shall add unto these prophecies, I will add unto him the plague that are written in this book. The Most High in his foreknowledge 
knew that. That's why through the revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach, or Jesus the Messiah, he declared that there will come a time that men would take away from the holy things of this book as a means to distort the understanding of the Father's people. And men will also corrupt the book by adding things that the Messiah did not preach about. He will add things that the prophets did not teach about. There will be things that will be inserted in the book and things that will be taken out of the book. And this is a way that the Most High by His Spirit gives us the ability to understand by way of His prophets, Daniel. He told Daniel at one point, seal up the books. Seal up the books. That lets you know that there was more to it. But he said, at the appointed time, knowledge is going to be increased. And I am going to redirect my people to all of the books that people had taken away or took from them. And here's one more. It is written in the book of the wars of the Lord that is coming by mouth, by way of the mouth of the prophet. Now, let's go to Joshua chapter 10. Verse 13, we're going now to Joshua, the prophet Joshua, chapter 10, verse 13. And if anybody believed the Moses, if you believe Ezekiel, if you believe Daniel, if you believe Joshua, if you believe what the prophet said, how can you let a pale face that the Most High never showed anything determine what belongs to the Most High or not? And if you're going to understand the grand sum total of the Most High's will as he releases his truth in the future, then you're going to have to understand that there are many things, many scrolls, many books that have been taken out. And then we're going to, this is, this is one of the ways that we want brothers and sisters to now get comfortable with understanding that any time we do books that are outside the Bible, don't mean that we're using something that's foreign. Come on, we're going to Joshua. Chapter 10, verse 13. And it reads, You ready? And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? Stop right there. There you go, another that go 69 books. He said, the sun stood still and the moon was stayed until Israel got the victory over their enemies. That means that Israel was in the midst of battle. Israel was in the midst of battle. He said, and the sun, the sun stood still in the sky and the moon stayed where it was at until they beat their enemies. He said, is this not written and recorded in the book of Jasher? Y'all see it? Y'all see it? Is this not written in the no book of Jasher? So when somebody want to start talking about something being canonized or canonized, you talking about a pale face or one of your preachers want to talk about something that's canonized, you tell them to open up their Bible. You tell them to open up their Bible and start reading them. Ask them, do thou believest what the prophets say? Do thou believest the things that were committed to the prophets? And if they say, yeah, you whip this video out and you show them these scriptures and you tell them to explain this. Is this not written in the book of the wars of the Lord? Is this not written in the book of the covenant? Is this not written? Ask them that and see what they have to say. Because nine out of ten times, they don't know because their minds have been closed and they've allowed themselves to come to a place to where they think that they have known the grand sum total of the most highest truth. But there is no way possible for you to do it with 66 books that the head been cut off a part of a scripture, the tail been cut off another part, and some places the whole body of the dog have been removed. All right, we're going to let you read one more. The, uh, King Dawood, I want you to hit that invite button. I want you to come on here, read a couple of these verses for your brothers and sisters. Okay, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 25. Almost there. We're going to 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 25. Somebody keep these verses right. up on the screen. 
All right. Then Samuel told the people now, the who, manner of the who kingdom. Samuel? Who was Samuel? Who was Samuel? Prophet. That's right. Prophet. Samuel was the prophet of the Most High. Samuel was the prophet of the Most High that anointed our father, King David. So anything that comes from the mouth of Samuel, you can pretty much take that to the bank because this is the prophet Samuel talking. Okay, go ahead, read. And wrote it in a book and laid it up before the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. And Saul also went home to Gebeah, and there went with him a band of men whose hearts God had touched. Okay, you can stop. But right the there. children. Okay, you can stop okay. right there. Now, it says, then Samuel told the people the manner of the kingdom and then wrote it in the book. And it became, the book became known as the manner of the kingdom. The book of the manner of the kingdom or the book of statutes. You see, some of the books were went by two names. Or you just like Ecclesiasticus as Sirach is also known as Sirach. Well, in this particular case, you had the book that was called the Manor of the Kingdom, or it was called the Book of Statutes, which came through the mouth of the prophet, because the prophet was the one that the Most High spoke to. You see, when the people rejected the Most High as their king, then they had to choose a man to be their king. But Samuel would become the Most High's mouthpiece. Henceforth, Samuel would speak to the people what the Most High spoke to him. And he wrote those things in a book. And it was called the Book of Statutes or the Manner of the Kingdom. There are 70 books. There are 70 books right there. Okay. All right. Okay, Brother D, all praises to the Most High Heavenly Father. Let's get one of these other young kings or queens in here. Come on. Give me another reader. Shalom. King Daoud, where you at? If you got a Bible, come on in here. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs> Let's see. So, uh, so are y'all hearing me now? <laughs> y'all hearing me now? Because, because we got other books. As we go into these videos, we're going to be pulling out books like this is called The Nazarene Acts of the Apostles. Also known as the Recognitions of Clement. It is an expanded edition. And Clement was a Roman citizen that was connected to Barnabas as he sought out the truth. He was led to Barnabas who led him to Peter and he walked side by side Peter and was up under the teachings of Peter and everything. And this is one of the books that we are going to deal with. We also have another book which is called The Clementine Homilies. The Clementine you don't see no invite button. Don't you see a camera there, uh, King Dao? Okay, I tell you, well, let me see if I can find you. Let me see if I can find you. Okay, now the Clementine homilies. Uh, well, y'all, okay, I got you. I'm adding you. I'm adding you, Dao. Now, now, Clementine homilies. This is going to be coming some recordings of, of Clement who walked okay. side by and became the writer for the Apostle Peter, who was originally oh, no. Apostle to the Gentile. It also is going to expose the falsehoods of the one that they call the Apostle Paul, who we call a beloved brother and a false apostle is also going to pull the cover off a lot of this. So we have to go before you and start dealing with this issue hey, of what is not and what is not so that when people see us using stuff to outside so of that, weird, man. then they will have a comprehension that they are not outside of, but they are a significant <laughs> part of. Because the synoptic gospels, what we know as the synoptic gospels, which is Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the three that go hand in hand, 
were not always three. They were not always three. There is another book that is called the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, where that was one unit. It was one scroll. It was one recording. But it was broken up. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They were broken up. They were broken up into three sections. But it was not so. So the books that we are going to be using outside of the framework of the 66 books or books that caused the 66 books to come into existence. They were books that were far older. They were the original scrolls, the original writings before they got broken up into different sections and given titles like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It was not always so. But in order for them to do that, as I said, some things they chopped the tail off of, some things they chopped the head off of, and some things got left completely out as a means to distort the uh, understanding of the people of the Most High. And the, the thing that we are using to get our brothers and sisters more comfortable yeah. outside the church, understand using the 66 book. King Daoud, we got King Daoud, we love, we got our young king, all praises, double honors to you. King Daoud, double honors to you, and double honors to all the brothers that's connected to you. We got King Daoud on the horn, and he's going to read a couple of scriptures. He's going to read a few scriptures. You ready, King Daoud? Man, I'm ready. I'm ready, yo. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Well, where are my brothers at? I want my brothers to keep these scriptures up here on the board. This set, this series, the videos. That's about to roll out of gear. You ain't seen no challenging yet. You ain't seen no challenging because you don't know what the doctrine of Christ is. I can guarantee it. I'm going to be the first one on here repenting on my place before the brothers and sisters saying, I know that they call me Elder Father, but every now and then I find myself standing on the wrong side of the fence when you reveal this truth. But I'm not going to be like no Christian preacher or somebody that think they know everything to run and hide when I'm wrong. I'm going to be the first one standing in line saying, I know I told you that, and I know I stood on it, but I was wrong about it. And this is how we break in the ice before we open up this series of videos. Come on, King Daoud, let's run the first Chronicles, chapter 29, verse 29. Somebody you said which, which, which one, Elder? What, what was the scripture? Chronicles, chapter 29, Verse 29. Okay, first Chronicles chapter 29, verse 29. Yep. Okay. And it reads. <laughs> okay, <verse 29. laughs> now the acts of David the king, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of Samuel, the seer, and in the book of Nathan, the prophet, and in the book of Gad, the seer. Hold on, hold on, wait a minute. We done read 70 books already. There's three more books. This is our father, the King David, the one that the prophet who heard from the mouth of the Most High only spoke to him as he spoke to the people. He anointed King David. Here we hear coming out of the mouth. Who can determine what is canonized when it comes to the Father's word? And it's coming out of the mouth of our father. He said, behold, read it again, King Daoud. <laughs> and he reads now the acts of David the king first and last behold they are written in the book of Samuel the seer and in the book of Nathan the prophet and in the book of Gad the seer so that's coming out of the mouth of King David that there was a book concerning the acts of our father David that are written in the book of Samuel the seer because Samuel was the prophet that seen the father's vision long before he ever gave it to the people. It was called the book of Samuel the seer. It was also written, it was also written, what is the other one? What is the other one? Uh, King Doe? In the book of Nathan, in the book of Nathan the prophet. The book of Nathan the prophet because after Samuel had his rest, the father raised up Nathan the prophet after him who also became one that would carry his vision, even to give vision to the king over Israel. He said it was also written because the book of the prophet Nathan had to have a book that our father David, who was the king, could be chastised or receive direction from the Most High when he needed. It is written in the book of Nathan, the, Nathan the prophet. And it's also written in the book of Dad the seer, right? <laughs> That's right. Hey, 
<laughs> is these not contained within the framework of the 66 books? And I hope, I hope you're on here. I hope you're getting this understanding. I hope you're getting this understanding. Uh, when we about to start opening up some books, we got some books over here to open up. It's almost, it's over a hundred and something books. We have over a hundred and something scrolls that can be documented that we don't know nothing about. And we out here talking scriptures like we know we don't reach the grand sum total of the Father's will when ain't none of us ever heard what Moses spoke in the ears of the people when it concerned the book of the covenant that they said all that you say, we will obey and be obedient to. We ain't even heard nothing about the book of the covenant we don't even know what we supposed to be being obedient to we are still walking in disobedience in a whole lot of areas because we ain't had the truth revealed in its fullness but we know that the most high told the prophet david in the last days knowledge going to increase now i'm not talking about no worldly knowledge or no no technological stuff the knowledge of these scriptures the knowledge of my word all right Let's go, uh, let's see here. Okay, let's go. You ready, King Dao? I'm ready. Let's go to Second Chronicles, second chapter, 15th verse. Okay. Okay, I'm there. And it reads, Now, therefore, the wheat and the barley the oil and the wine. We need to be in. Hold up, hold up, King Dao. Hold up, King Dao. I think I missed it's, one. Where, where you at right okay. now? I'm where in Second at? Chronicles. I'm in Second Chronicles, second chapter, uh, 15, 15th verse. Go to Second Chronicles, ninth chapter, 29th okay. verse. Okay, ninth chapter, 29th verse. Yeah. That was my mistake uh, on that Second Chronicles. I made a mistake for Second Chronicles two fifteen. Okay, that's Second Chronicles, uh, chapter nine, verse twenty nine, two that's nine. Right. That's right. That's right. Oh, okay, and it reads: Now the rest of the acts of Solomon, first and last, are they not written in the book of Nathan the prophet, and in the prophecy of ah Ahijah and Shelonite, and in the visions? Of I do the seer against Jeroboam the son of Nebat. See there, there's three more books dealing with the acts of Solomon. There's three more books that you never knew what was written in there. How you gonna jump up there like arrogant and proud, like you know everything that the Messiah did, that you know everything about Israel? I'm keeping a law. I'm keeping a statute. You don't know how many laws, how many statutes, how many nothing was written in these books that you ain't never seen before. So what men need to do is men need to humble themselves up under the mighty hand of the Most High and have a complete reliance on the Ruach Hakadesh and be open and be open when the Most High start bringing truth. But you can't have the Most High bringing you no truth and you arrogant like some Christian person in church like, oh, well, you already know everything. No, it ain't happening like that. Do you see what I'm talking about, King Daoud? Let them see it. They got to see it. Okay, there ain't no go. more talking. Let's yeah. go. First Kings 11 chapter, 41, 41st verse. First Kings 11 chapter, 44 verse. 41st verse. Oh, 41st, 4 1. Yep. Okay. And it reads And the rest of the acts of Solomon and all that he did and his wisdom, are they not written in the book? of the acts of solomon and yeah we got the books of proverbs yeah we got the book of ecclesiastes yeah we got the book of sirach but what about the book of the acts of solomon where is that book at what's that that what's that king dog that's about 75 books now right <laughs> that's about 75 about 75 of them right uh, uh -huh. <laughs> so i hope you brothers and sisters are starting to get the point but while we got you on the ropes, we might as well go on and let you have it real good so you can write these things down. Go back and challenge the so-called deacon in church that think he know what he's talking about when it comes to displaying the words of a false apostle who is a mortal man just like you and me. How you gonna take my, how I'm gonna take 
King Daoud's word. I love him, and he's my brother. Why am I going to take his word over that the prophet, uh, the prophet Nathan or the King Solomon or the father David? How am I going to let my brother King Daoud and his finite understanding override something that the Most High showed the prophet Samuel? How am I going to let that happen? This is what we got to deal with when our brothers is dealing with our beloved brother uh, Paul. How are you going to let somebody supersede something? So we're going to show you what's contained in the book itself. Okay, let's go, King Dao. Let's go to Second Chronicles 13, chapter 22nd verse. Second Chronicles 13, chapter. You say 20th verse? 22nd. 22nd verse, okay? And it reads, and the rest of the acts of Abijah and his ways and his sayings are written in the story of the prophet I do. Now, now, I know you heard about the prophet David. And I know you heard about the prophet Jeremiah and the prophet Daniel and, you know, Nehemiah. But tell me, have you ever heard of the prophet I do? Because... There is a book out there that the Most High spoke some things that this prophet I do has some acts in this world on behalf of the Most High that were powerful enough to be pinned down in a book for the sake of Israel. But my thing is this, how can we be that arrogant when we got all of these things missing that we never heard of? He said these acts are written in the in the book of the prophet, I do. What you think about that, King? Sheesh. <laughs> hey, we hey, they hey man, they better get they better get familiar with the power, man. See, that's what I'm saying. They gotta get familiar with the power. If you if you think a page gonna wake up and lead you, that ain't gonna happen. You better get very familiar with the power you're dealing with. That's right, man. Very familiar. Try to get our brothers and sisters to understand is that. When, when their sister was coming on there calling me a false prophet because they misunderstood what I said when I told them that they could throw the Bible out the window, I'm talking about the 66 book, as you know. It got to go out the window if you're going to be able to receive everything else that the Most High got. Say, you know what? Because when you throw it out the window, you don't have no choice but to rely on the Ruach Hakadesh to lead you by way of the Spirit where you want to go. And the they written in that's, the book that's right the other because they better eat that were to guide us into the direction or guide right. us toward the most high it wasn't for you to start trying to mimic everything that your forefathers did or walk where they walk talk how they talk you can't do it it was to, it was to be a guide to guide us you see they better eat it up they better eat it up. See, cause when, cause it's gonna come a time where these folks gonna burn. It's gonna take them from them, and then where it's gonna be. Yeah. See, you gonna have to, you have to know that these words are real. If they ain't living to you, what's the use of reading? Right. You can, you can, you can read, but reading ain't gonna save them. That's right. Reading ain't gonna get you nowhere. People need a real, people, people need a real bowl of food. People need a real hug. People need these real words. People need to see real people out here doing these scriptures. You know what I'm saying? See, so they, so people keep seeing this shadow, elder, but they don't see the body. Where the body at? Yeah. Where the body at? Well, we gonna That's right. It. You 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 told them right. You told them right, elder. They they gonna keep relying on the book, and when them people run up in there, that book ain't gonna do nothing for them, but keep laying on the counter. Yeah, yeah. That's right. They better eat. They, they better eat it up. Yeah. That, they hey, eat it up. Stop playing. That's, what that's right. Man ain't gonna live by bread alone. That's right. We're going to live by this word. We got to live by this word. And we cannot we cannot afford to allow ourselves. And see, I'd be the first one to say that, that I become an arrogant dude sometimes. Let me tell you a story that's written in one of these books. It said the Messiah, he opened the ears of a man that was deaf. You see, the man that was deaf, he was just deaf. So he didn't believe in sound, period. He thought that everybody else was just like him without sound. So the Messiah came along and opened up his ears. And you know what the man said? 
He said the same thing that a lot of us that's in the world said. He said, oh, I can hear it all now. I hear everything. But the Messiah said, can you hear the wind? Can you hear the spirit? The Messiah starts saying, how with such arrogance can you declare that you can hear everything? Can you hear the angelic heavenly host while they're seen in the Father's ears? Can you hear uh, the mm -hmm. prophecy as it comes from the Most High? He asked him a whole lot of things that his natural ears could never hear. And it was like, how could you be mm -hmm. so arrogant? It reminded me of one day I had did a video and the title of the video is still on YouTube. I put on the title of the video, we'll answer any question any Christian got. And, and when I heard that scripture, that spirit jumped up and clap. You had the same type of arrogance that this dude. How are you going to answer any question that any Christian got? When anybody on the planet could be labeled as a Christian, don't mean that they're a Christian, but they can ask you some questions that you ain't never even let enter into your mind. You can't answer nothing other than what I allow you to be a, and she, immediately, I got to start repenting. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and we got to be able to acknowledge the fact that time from time we have been as arrogant as our own brothers. You understand what I'm saying? And that's why the yep. most high, no matter how high you get in your understanding, he will bring a new revelation that will cause everything you learn to seem like it don't even matter no more. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Oh, they ain't trying to achieve it all, man. They they like they he said he said 30, 60, and a hundred fold. So some people just want their 30. Elder, you gotta let them have his 30. Some people want their little 60. You gotta let them have their little 60, yo. But you want your whole hundred. So you try this is what you're going for. You're going for your whole hundred. You know what I'm saying? See, I'm going, I'm a whole hundred runner too. I'm a hundred fold worker too. I believe in that too. If you put a hundred out there on the table, it's time to scoop it all. It ain't no, it ain't no, it ain't no um no bitter just sitting there growing stagnant in that still water like that, man. Right. They ain't doing like people just talk, man. They talk. You know what I'm saying? Whole bunch, that's it, man. You know, like that noodle water. That's all it is, noodle water. It's a whole bunch of flavor in the packet. That's just it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what that's what everybody wanna wanna be. They just wanna sell their own brand, not knowing that we all part of one body. And we all do we all do certain things. You might be the you might be the best at what you do, but your methods don't that that's what make us different. Our methods. You got shoemakers. You got um you got you got um lawyers. You got um trash men. You got policemen. You got people who do different things, but they all equate to that how that government ran. You know what I'm saying? Some people just don't want to take their position so because they so worried about what you got going on. You know what I'm saying? Knowing that the, the one that's above us is the one putting us over either 10 or 100 or 10, 10 thousands. They don't know they don't know the magnitude you were sent here to uh, make people gravitate to the to not only the father but his uh, his set apart son too. They don't know what you here to do. You know what I'm saying? So of course they're gonna come against you like they came against all, all the men in the scriptures who proclaim the word and said that it's it's true and they beneath it and it's more to learn because he's everlasting learning. We don't ever know like him. We don't because we, it says in the scriptures we we can never think like him. Even with all that law knowing and everything that we do, we don't think like him. He had to tell us how to think. He got to tell us how to be men. He got to tell us how to stand up. He got to tell us what's good food. He got to tell us what's bad food. He got to tell us what's good. We got to tell us what's wrong. We don't tell him what's good. We don't tell him what's wrong. Mm -hmm. Literally, like treat your brother as you treat yourself. If he's in his image. And I'm just telling you wrong. What I'm saying is, hey, he ain't touching you and he ain't dealing with nobody. He only dealing with me. When we all part of this one body, I, but see one thing that people not going to do, they're not going to let you go at your own method because they 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 really want to do what you're doing. They really want to do what you're doing, but they don't know how to get in. They don't know how to keep knocking on the door. They don't know how to stay down because it ain't no loyalty in them. It ain't no respect in them. They was lames in the streets. They're going to be lames in the scripts. That's just exactly what it's going to be. See, if you in the world and all you want to do is argue, you ain't never want to come to any understanding or come to a conclusion, that's what they're going to be in the scripts, Elder. They're just there to read. I can read, brothers. 
But I, I know this, I know that. Don't know nothing. When the scriptures say we have to come down and, and have to admit that we nothing. Lower than the dust. Mm -hmm. from, the dust from the dust you came to the dust you go. Do you want to go for real or do you want to go willingly? I'm going willingly so I can be built back up, Elder. They don't want to be built back up. They love America too much. They want you to walk just like them. When they imprints ain't never been perfect. The only imprints that were perfect is Mashiach's. So that's who feet we trying to step in. That's who imprints we trying to step in because we know that that path is safe. We know that path is safe. So we're going to go to safe. Dangerous path. You can't stand up here. And, 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 com and convince those who gonna see, see every test, every knee gonna bow, yeah. every tongue gonna confess, every knee bow. We relaxed on them. That, them Ottomans over there, man, we just kick our feet up on their back. Because he said, whatever they stacked up in this world, Elder, it's for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what they did it for. They doing all they stacking, they ain't doing nothing but heaping all them treasures up for you. Cause you know what the most you know what Yahuwah says in Isaiah. The coastland shall wait for me, and it shall come get my sons and my daughters, and all they silver and gold. Right. right. And it shall bring and it shall bring them back to the land. It didn't say he gonna part no sea. He gonna do it just like they did me. Yeah. You brought me over here on the boat. You better build one to take me back over there. And I'm sipping mimosas this time. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yep. yep. That's what the scriptures are implying. So what they talking about, Elder, they trying to keep they trying to keep making the people deter from these scriptures. You right. want to catch your crew, you want your cruise ship, you better get on the scripts. Right. You better get on your hood team. If you want right. to get if you want to get back home, you better get on your hood team. Because right. ain't nobody gonna set you free. It ain't it ain't no such thing as nobody redeeming us. The only man that can redeem us is the very one who paid the price. Right. Which is a which is a brother. Which is a brother who tried to lead us back into the father's house. He could have been selfish. He could have said, nah, 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 nah. I don't want nobody to make it. But he said, nah, man, I'm going to go get my brother guy in the ghetto. Right. He was up to no good at first. I'm going to yeah. wake him all up. Because I know he got that fire. You know, see, we are looking for the same way. So you can't tell us, you can't tell us our power ain't alive. Just because yeah. he ain't talking to you don't mean I don't hear him every morning. Right, because you said in the law, the rule I gonna wake you up and deal with you. As soon as you pop your eyes open, you gonna be like, you still laying there? Are you ready to go? Yeah, you right. Still, you still... <laughs> <laughs> they ain't never felt that feeling, Aki. They ain't never felt that feeling, big out. They ain't never felt that feeling. Hey, look they ain't here. felt that feeling. Oh man, you still on this live popsicle? Man, they ain't felt that feeling. Oh, I, I have work to put in, man. People they don't want to see me. Trying to be playing all the time. Look at man. that. Man, they ain't felt that feeling. Look at this dude. Man. I see him, man. <laughs> Look at I'm coming dude. to get this man. Shit long, shit long. I know. Yeah, yeah. I got oh, that. Oh, man. Look. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> What's good? Yes, sir. Man. Palan, yeah. man, that's what I'm saying. Hey, enjoying this good Yahoo breeze. Oh, praise, that's right. Hey, man, good Yahoo breeze, man. Always, always good because we ain't just reading. We really living it up. That's right. Big fact. Big fact. That's right. That's we take we take the whoopings. We take the whoopings and the cushions. We take the whoopings and the cushions out. That's facts. That's facts. Why can't I hear him just that clear though? He is up. Uh, I guess it'd be like when it's live. Yeah, you know? man. Give me a song. Yeah. Elder don't know how to work electronics, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but yeah, no, we pillars, man, and, and we got to do that. We got to be that. You know what I'm saying? We we got That's a lot right. of work to do out here because apparently it's uh, a lot of labor, uh, uh, but it ain't not a lot of workers out here ready to do that work. So. Yes, salute. Oh, we got King, we got King, we got King. We got one, Mariah, big bro. <laughs> man, what's going on, Elder? What's going on, Elder? All right, right. all right. Back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, what? Y'all chopped it up? No, nah, I mean, I chopped yeah. up. I chopped up a bro earlier. We got work uh, to do. We got some. We got some behind scenes for the yeah. world. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, 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 like I said. 
Double honors to you, King Dao. You understand right. what I'm saying? I think is is that you know what? We know we got a lot of lames out there, but we're gonna play the part right. for my shot. Right. He understood what he was dealing with. Right. But he went above, above and beyond the call of duty. You understand That's what I'm saying? Right. And even as That's I'm right. reminded of a story of John the Baptist, how they sent Judas <laughs> down in there to become John the Baptist's disciple first. This ain't recorded in the 66th book. They sent him to become John the Baptist's disciple first. And when he went before John, weeping and crying, John told his disciples, he said, look, the wolf have come to lay down with the lamb. He said, but his disciples didn't comprehend what he was saying. We know the lanes. We know who they are. We know the foul spirits. But we don't give you the benefit of the doubt because you got a part to play. We're going to get our brothers and sisters, those that are willing to hear what the Most High got to say, they will hear. So the thing is, for whosoever will, let them come. But we're going to get our brothers and sisters to broaden their scope of perspective because that's the only way that we're going to be walking together as we're supposed to. Time to cut these narrow minds off. And for those brothers that get arrogant and set in their ways, guess what? Then by the spirit of the Father's word, they will begin to get chopped off at the ankle, from the knees, okay. from the thighs, until either you know, either you'll jump on our team in this wheelchair, or we'll do like somebody with diabetes and keep on cutting until you ain't got nothing left. So, double honors to you, King Daoud. I'll praise God, Heavenly Father, as his glorious son. Big up, you, y'all. Big up, you, y'all. Big up, you, y'all. Big up, you, y'all. Big up, you, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What you doing here, Pop? You getting ready to come? Okay. Hey, y'all be good out there, man. Y'all keep them laws, statutes, and commitments. Don't, don't, don't change for no man. Don't let no man steal your crown. But I'm about to steal Pop, so y'all be blessed. Salam. So